Hey, welcome in, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm very excited about tonight's show. Uh, we have a very, very esteemed guest that's going to be joining us, brother based out of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, so, again, I appreciate you all for all the support that you guys have continuously given to us here at the Transportation and Logistics Clubhouse. Uh, You know that every single Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to be bringing you some of the brightest and most successful in the uh, transportation logistics industries. So, uh, you know, without further ado, I do want to go ahead and say welcome to the stage. Delmar, how are you doing today, brother? I am great. I appreciate you having me, man. Oh, anytime, man. Anytime. Uh, So, Delmar, uh, for the folks who... Don't know you now. They're going to know you after this situation right here. After (laughs) tonight's discussion, they're going to know you. Um, But tell them who you are. Give them a little introduction on who you are and what you do, brother. Gotcha. I'm Delmar Wood. I'm the owner of RDL Trucking, and I'm the owner of Rent My Trailer Now. I'm the largest African-American trailer leasing company in Georgia. I've been in transportation since 2005. Um, I drove with Swift for seven years. I ended up driving and leasing a jumping truck on with – another company for five years and I end up getting my own authority after that. Cause I felt, you know, I felt like I could actually do this on my own. And it kind of, I struck out and got my own uh, authority and it opened up all kinds of uh, doors for me at the same time. I made a lot of mistakes, which led me to rent my trailer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Look, and the thing is folks, Folks are afraid of mistakes, but really, those those are some huge teaching lessons. You know, what type of what were some of those big mistakes uh, that you felt like you got some of the the greatest uh, insights from? Well, when I got my authority, cause when, when I was an owner operator, let's just go back up. When I was an yeah. owner, I, I felt like okay, I'm with Swift. I did seven years. I kind of know how this go. I'm a driver, you know. So I got my I, became, I leased my truck through this company. I don't want to say their name. They did a good job. And I feel like after those five years, I can do this on my own. All it is is backroom information. I know how to drive. I know how to communicate. These drivers ain't nothing to it. Fast forward, I got my authority. And the first thing I did was start turning down loads when I first got out there because I felt like I deserved more, but I hadn't proven myself. That was my downfall right there. Mm-hmm. My, ego, my ego got in the way. It was like, hold up. I know you're giving this guy who got three years in the game already $150 more than me, so I ain't taking it. Mm-hmm. And when I didn't take it, I got nothing. Right. They moved on because I didn't prove myself. That was my first mistake right there. Okay. Look, we we just gonna save it. We, you know, that's a that's a huge that's a huge one right there because that affects a lot of people. You know, yeah. ego ego is one of the the largest things that keeps people from their blessings. So, um, you know, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, no doubt, and that's exactly what was going on. I gotta be honest because I just felt like. Um, you know, I know the rates are five fifty, seven hundred. Why are you giving me? My, why I gotta take four fifty? Why I gotta take five? <laughs> then I had a little money in my savings account, so I was like, "Yo, I got about twenty, thirty thousand in the savings. I'm just gonna tough it out today." You know, I, I, my demands are met, and right. I end up pulling from my savings account to pay the drivers because Ooh. my ego was in the way. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, to be honest, I think that I've definitely had to catch myself many a times in those in those ego situations and. I just think that I, I'm blessed to be in a spot now. I've been humbled by life, you know what I mean. So right. <laughs> my my ego, my ego done left, you know. In, in most cases, so I appreciate that, you know what I mean. No doubt, man. It's all honesty there. And um, what I did learn from that is, Delmar, you got to crawl before you walk. You you honestly got to build your reputation up. People got to know who you are, um, and they know you it, and that you do a good job. Because the thing is, though, just because you got a truck and a trailer, doesn't make you one of the best out here. Get in line. You got a new truck. You got a good driver. You got a new trailer. Get in line with everybody else who's doing it. What's going to make you stick out? What's going to make you special? So I had to get to that point where I realized, like, that little, little ego you got, let's tuck that in, throw it over in the corner, and get to work. Let's grind. Let's show them what you're about. Right. All right. Look, man. So, look, you starting off strong, coming out the gate swinging. Look, let's go. Let's, <laughs> look, let's downshift just a bit so they can know. So you said you started your uh, your career as a driver in what year? Uh, 05, 2005 with Swiss Transportation. Okay, cool, cool. And, you know, when you first got your start, you know, how was it, you know, transitioning from, you know, being a non-driver to learning how to drive a CDL truck? Man, I was the worst backing 
person <laughs> in, in, in the class. I mean, it was me and this other lady. I was God awful, bro. Like, I'm telling you, I was out there. I hit, I hit every cone. I oversteered. I did everything wrong you can imagine when it comes to backing up. And I couldn't get it to save my life mm. when I got up there. And the, and the teacher told me, the instructor pulled me to the side, pulled me in the room. I guess it was just frustrating me because I'll just take the longest to do anything. I run over the cones. He got to go set the cones back up. You know, I'm, I, I'm making the truck probably damn near run hot, like all over the clutch. I'm the truck cutting off. I'm just doing the worst, man. He mm-hmm. pulled me inside. He said, "Hey, don't mind. Look, man, if I can, if I can, um, let you go. If I can fail <laughs> you, I would." I'm like, I just looked at him. I was like, "Man, that just really just killed my little ego." I'm like, "Man, I, you supposed sort to of be lifting me up." You gonna be right. telling me you would let me go if you could? And, and it wasn't like I was yelling and screaming because when you when you suck you don't you real quiet you don't say nothing because you know right. you're awful. Right. So I wasn't like I was kicking dirt and then I was really quiet until you know I was I could shift the gears well, turn just as good. When it came that back and boy, just know everybody just dropped their head and they're like, man, I don't want to go, I don't want to go by him because it's gonna take him thirty minutes to do <laughs> a parallel part. It's gonna take him thirty minutes to do a straight line back. I, they just knew it, and I just like yo, I that wasn't my thing. Yeah, yeah, no, I feel it, man. I definitely feel it. And when you when you when you get back down to it, I know that it was it was those growing pains. What do you what do you feel like it taught you? You know, being you know the, you know quote unquote the the bottom two in the, in the bunch. Man, it taught me patience and don't give up. And I know right. it sounds so corny y'all to say that, but honestly though, when you when you suck as bad as I did. You, you you have to must up something. You got to figure something else out. You got to say, okay, what do you really want? Do you want it? Keep at it till you get better at it. I kept at it till I got average, but kept till I became average. And I kept at it when I became above average. The next thing you know, I was a better backer than anybody who's been out here 10 years. But it took me a year and a half to get to that point. Right. I was able to get onto our account. It was a tire account out of McDonald, Georgia. It had seven to 10 stops. And the guy, the, uh, the, uh, the trainer that reached out, he was like, hey, Delmar. His name is Corey Dubos. He's still out there getting it at Prime too, by the way. What's up, Dubos? But um, he was like, he, yeah, yeah. He, he gave me a shout. He said, look, I see you have a hard time backing. I back up seven to ten times a day. You will learn quicker with me because I'm not just over the road driving two or three days at a time. I said, okay, cool. Say no more. I jumped in the truck with that guy. And the first day I got in there, he's like, yo, you're going to uh, you gonna have to drive right now. I said, no, I, I've been up all day, bro. You know, it's like two o'clock in the evening. You know, you know, he said, nah, you ain't finna get scared in that sleeper back there. You finna get in this wheel up here. I was like, yo, I jumped in a wheel, scraping gears. He had a mm-hmm. load in the back. I ain't never had a load. Always was empty. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't getting the RPMs up right. It was like, mm, mm. Every, time, every gear I scraped until I got on instant. Mm. I hit that little thing on the side. Do, 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 do. People was pushing <laughs> me over. You know, and I'm like, hold on. They pushing me over. He's like, man, quit going off the shoulder. I said, the tribe. Came by, he kind of pushed me, so we'll cut back into it. All this stuff I didn't know. Man, I was so stressed out by the time I left Birmingham to Montgomery. It was a two and a half hour drive. I was exhausted. Mm. He, had, he, had, he, he said he, I, he, he was in the back of the sleep. He was like, I can't get no sleep. Every five seconds, you running off the line. So he, he told me to get in the back, man. I, I got in the back. I was like, thank you, God. I should have right. off that line a whole lot more to get out of, get out behind his wheel. Right. <laughs> Look, man. Look, you said a lot just then, and – for the folks who out there, you know, everybody done drove on the street. Everybody done drove on the interstate and hit that the do 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 do. What is it called? Is that a rumble strip? What is it? What's it called? I, I don't know. I just call it the do 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 do. That's what I right. call it. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. we all we've all been there. We've all hit it. But uh, I bet it feels a little bit different when this your your first time driving. Uh, you know, uh, in a team environment like that. Yeah, uh, it was, like get out there. Yeah, it was. It was something different, bro. Yeah, I feel you. So let me ask this, you know, starting your career as a driver, how did that prepare you for uh, your trailer rental business? Oh, man, it was just the honestly, you got seven years with Swift. I learned a lot about the truck and the trailer. So when mm-hmm. I transitioned, I had to learn because, you know, when you're a company driver for me, I didn't check their truck like I was supposed to because I had a brand new truck. Who checks the brand new right. truck that got 20 miles on it? Nobody does. Those bad habits I took over to became on operator. When I got a, I became on operator, it was a huge truck. So all that newness was out the window. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't checking the oil like I supposed to. I look up the oil light on. I look up the cooler light was on. I'm like, dang, what's wrong with this truck? It was <laughs> used. So I wasn't used to it. I took those bad habits and not pre tripping. I took it over to became on operator. And I broke down so many times, it was unreal. 
So wow. once I learned that I'm supposed to be looking and taking care of everything, I realized, okay, if you want to scale, you want to grow, you got to take care of whatever you get. And that's when I started learning, like, okay, let me take care of the trailer I'm, I'm rolling with. Let me take care of the truck. And that, that went further on. So when I started, when I transitioned to my authority, I took those good habits and I applied them to my authority when I got it. Okay. Okay. So when you uh, actually are looking at trailers, you know, just from your experience as a, a driver and then having your own authority and having to pull these trailers, you know, what are some of the telltale signs of, you know, what's a good trailer versus something that you should just uh, leave alone? Oh, well, some of the things I look at off the rip because it was just becoming leaving Swift. They had new trucks, new trailers going to the second company. They had some decent trailers. And when I got my own, I had to learn really quickly what was bad. Cause I bought a couple that was just terrible and I ended up spending seven, $8,000 on it. And one of the reasons was because I was looking underneath the trailer, like I was supposed to, uh, mm-hmm. the, the undercarriage of the trailer tells you a lot about what you about to deal with. You, mm-hmm. you look, for, you look for the, the cross members. If they've been and the wood is all bunkered at the bottom. That's a telltale sign that this trailer done been through a lot. And now you're going to get it. You're at the end of it. Now mm-hmm. you're going to spend three or four or five thousand dollars easily and you ain't even started out. True. I mean, I hear you. I mean, even I, I saw you post something on Instagram today. You know, yeah. was that was that exactly what you were just describing? Yep, exactly what I was describing. This is my Insta story, John. You can check it out. But um it, it that was it. It was basically the floor was buckling and I didn't preach it. I'm too busy looking at the cosmetic part of it. When people buy trailers, the first thing they start to see is how pretty it is. I'm right. looking for the bones. <laughs> oh, this thing like, clean. <laughs> oh, it's clean. It's clean. Yeah, it's clean. It's a bunch of problems, too. The brakes is low. The tires got flat spots. You didn't check them. The roof got leaks. The floor is caving in. You ain't paid attention to none of that. But it's shiny, and the wheel and the rims are shiny. And the door mm-hmm. is closed up in the seal well. But you got a $6,000 problem going on. You're going to end up having a claim on your load because you're too busy looking at the pretty part of it. He done sold you a hot mess. Right. Look, what are what are uh what are flat spots in the tires? You know what I mean? Flat, yeah, flat like flat spots in the tires basically is when a driver uh hit the brakes or he hooks up he or she hooks up to the tra- the trailer and they don't allow the air to flow through the trailer. And the so, so the brakes can release and you go forward. What happens? They back up to the trailer, hook up to it because they like NASCAR drivers, mm-hmm. and they drive off. They don't allow the air to go back to the wheels, the rims and well to the, the cams and the uh the brake chambers to the release the brakes. And they'll drag the trailer. So it, it needs air in order to release. They'll hook up to it and just start moving. And the right. wheels are locked up. So now they drag in the tires. And that's mm-hmm. the flat spot. They drag the tires. Then eventually they start to roll and they don't care because it's not their trailer. Oh, yeah. I, I have seen those, actually. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I've kind of like had the, the pleasure uh, and the opportunity <laughs> to kind of like uh, work on a, a very, very large warehouse, uh, at a large mm-hmm. warehouse. And they had, you know, um, I want to say at least 50, 60 trailers at almost all times. So like being able to see, I, I, I understand exactly what you're talking about. I just didn't know how to classify it when gotcha. I saw it before. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And, and that's one of the things I, I do too. When people bring my trailer back, this little gem for y'all too. I always get them to roll the tires backwards and forwards. Cause a lot of times they, you know, they're, they're rolling back perfectly right there where the flat spot is. And when you do your inspection, you go out like, Oh, the tire was great. You go back and re-rent it, and somebody get it and say, hey, it's a flat spot. He done drug both, all eight tires because he or she done slammed on the brakes because the accident was up there, and they drug the tire. That's another way of putting those slicks in the tires, hitting the brakes so hard that they lock up and drag. Yeah. The next thing you got those flat spots. So they'll come back and say, hey, Delmar, everything's perfect. They'll back it up, and they'll back it up just right. They can hide the flat spots. Then guess what? They long gone. You gave them a deposit. Now you got to deal with eight tires that's costing you Three to five hundred dollars, and now you got to go after them to get your money. Oh, okay, so when that when that type of stuff happens, you know, to a, a, a tire, do you have to replace the tire? Can you just get it re? Uh, what's that thing called when you re grooved? Yeah, can you do no, that? I, you could do that, man. But honestly, I don't really mess with the recaps too tough. I uh-huh. do purchase trailers from time to time that have recaps on it, and depending on what's going on, I may leave them on. But for the most part, I don't recap them. I put new tires on there. I want the people right. that um who, who rent for me. They don't have to worry about tires popping or they, they don't like the recaps. Some recaps are great and they'll last years. Some of them will pop. They can look awesome and pop in, in a day, two days, a whole month. Right. Yep. It doesn't okay. even matter if you have the correct air and sometimes they just pop. Okay. And those, the re- when you can, you can tell a recap, like when you're riding down the interstate and you just see that whole 
long strip that looked like it it go around uh, one of the eighteen wheeler tires. Absolutely, you and you see, you like go the rest of the tire because you see the whole three sixty of the tire. That's a re, that's basically right. a recap. <laughs> okay, yeah, man, you put in, you put in terminology with the things that I've experienced and seen, and just you know just took it for what it was. But now you you actually uh, allow me to connect what the actual terminology is. So I there we go, bro. It. Oh, you welcome, man. Yeah. All right. So look, right now, how many trailers would you say you got in your fleet? It's uh, over 150 now, man. Honestly, it's, I know it's, it's hard to count because I do sell them. I fix and sell them, too. So uh-huh. I know the accurate count if I sat down and did it. But it depends on which ones get ready. Some of them I lease out. Some of them I flip. So the right. numbers are fluctuating all the time because uh-huh. I get them in. I was like, oh, very little work for this. One. I'm going to sell it. Oh, very little work for this. One. I'm going to lease it. It just depends on what's the needs of the people. I may get some man that's probably got wood walls and spring ride. That's that's trailers people tend not to like as much. So I may flip those and I keep the plate of that ride and lease those. Okay. So look, I mean, you, you just mentioned a word that I have to talk about all the time, but truth be told, I've never been explained what it was. What is air rod? Is it just an updated technology? No, no it's like uh, basically the, the, you got a spring and you got air. Air rod has air bags. It's four of them and it has a shock. It absorbs the bumps as you hit them on a roll. If you hit a spot, something that's uneven, it allows the freight in the back to maintain its, you know, stature where it's sitting there. It won't shift as much because it, the, the airbag's absorbing the bumps and hits and, the, you know, the, 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 um, the unbalance on the road or whatever. But you got the spring rides. It's not exact. It's just hitting. It's metal on metal. So it's just going, you know, boom, boom, boom. So you right. back there, them can goods that you had could have shift. They could shift. You yeah. know, you could you got your scraps back there, but it's still shifting. You like, oh, I didn't even turn that hard. I didn't hit no curbs. So that's okay. one of the reasons why people like the air the airbags a whole lot better. Okay, yeah, because you know, uh, folks that are dispatchers out in the house, what's up, what's up? Um, you know, you see it on the load board. I use that for the most part. Appreciate y'all. And if y'all need a free account, you know, just click in my bio. You know, you you get your situation that's right now. Um, but. Um, you see brokers post all the time that, you know, a vehicle, I mean, the trailer has to be air ride. And most times, I ain't going to say most times, I'm just going to speak for myself. You know, I'm really saying, well, I know this is air ride just because, you know, my, my, my client told me, but what exactly does that mean? So I appreciate you explaining that. And, um, uh, you know, what, how many, how many, how many, uh, trailers do you have, if any, uh, that got the lift gate? I, I don't have any. When I first started out, I didn't get a lot of requests for that mm-hmm. at all, man. It, it's more of a, a niche type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, however, it is needed. So I tell people, if you want to start out a trailer rental company, man, you can lean towards things like that, like low boys and, you know, uh, lift gates and stuff. So you can stand out opposed to guys who just have driving hands, flatbeds, and reefers. That'd be a great right. way to stand out. Okay. Yeah, no, I agree. I definitely agree. Um, and it just so happens, I thought they were normal just because working for my, my former employer, you know, they do a lot of deliveries to uh, their individual branches. So all of the 53 footers had lift gates on them. Um, so I didn't know that it wasn't necessarily uh, just not common. Uh, it, yeah. it was just like a huge part of their 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 operation. Well, yeah, because a lot of times people get these big accounts. They might have them for three or four years and they say, you need a lift gate. And, the, and that company go out there and grab 60, 70 trailers with lift gates on them quite naturally because they're making millions. I do the same thing too. Yeah, yeah. So I hear you. What's the what's the uh, what's the deal with a plated trailer? Like, why do folks want a plated trailer? Man, honestly though, the air ride and plated is so funny to me because I built my business off of wood walls, no e track spring ride trailers because people told me don't buy them. You can't get them loaded. It's it's a, it's this thing that got these drivers out here. They go out and repeat each other. Hey mm-hmm. man. You, you, nobody loads a, a uh, wood wall trailer. I'm like, what are you talking about, man? Nobody really cares for that. If, now, you have certain accounts that won't play at walls, then that's that's fine. However, it ain't it, you don't necessarily need it in order to get out here and win. Now, one of the reasons people do like it is because they don't, those walls don't tear up so easy like a wood wall would. Mm-hmm. And you t- all it takes is a forklift driver who's his second day at work. He just started. <laughs> And he feel confident. He got the gas to the, you know, boom. He, he got it in overdrive. He's mm-hmm. running through that side of that wall, crushing every piece of wood just to get them canned goods in there so he can get all by 5 p.m. Mm-hmm. Now, it's really hard to do that on a plated trailer. You're going to have to really 
take that fort lifts and go through the side of that trailer with the wood walls. It's not, it doesn't take a whole lot in order to crush that wood up. Then you go somewhere and they tell you, Hey, your trailer is not in great shape. It's going to tear my product up. Mm hmm. No, I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. I've, I've seen the, uh, you know, all of the trailers that I was dispatching for at one point, I was dispatching 13 trucks. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. We were getting it, brother, getting it. And they were all, you know, we had the newer accounts because it's a, it's a larger corporation. So I never really saw the, you know, everything wood interior, but, um, you know, I, I can I can get down with it. You know what I mean? You push come to shove. If that's what you got, that's what you got. It's going to get the right. job done. It, it really will, man. I tell people, don't be afraid of the wood walls. You'll be amazed how many people don't ask for that. And if they do ask for it, I always ask for one because it's more trailers that, that has wood walls than plate. When I right. dispatch these drivers, I say, they say, oh, we need a plate one. I say, oh, so I think to myself, this is a good chance for me to ask for $50 more because who, who, what's the chances of somebody being in that area that has a plated trailer that's empty right now? The chances mm-hmm. are slim. So I say to myself, yeah. hey, hold on, let me ask for 50 more dollars. I got to plate it. I, and I go ahead and get in their head. I say, look, you, uh, if you hang the phone with me, you're going to have to go find somebody else. They're going to get their trailer rejected because they got wood walls. They got a leaky floor. I make them, all, I make them so scared that they'll be like, you know what? They aren't going, going to book it with you. <laughs> I hear you, brother. I hear you. You know, you got to sell your business. At, you, you, know, you really I, do. Yeah, I know you're good at it, too. You know what I mean? Hey. Just, just learning your style, you know, I, I can learn a lot. No, man, I appreciate you, man. And that's why I'm here on this platform to give people gems that they can go and, you know, execute. That's what's important for me. Yeah. So, look, tell me this. What's the what's the trick to the trade to secure your your your, your loads if you don't have E-Tracks? Like, what are you using to secure it? Low locks. Low, low locks. Lock. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, this is one of the tricks I use, too. If I felt like that load in the back was one of those loads that shift easily, I tell them, hey, man, when you get eight to ten pallets in there, well, like about five to six pallets. Let me put a low lock in between every four pallets or something so they mm-hmm. don't shift because it's the wood walls. Um, and it was a spring ride. Nine times ten, if it's wood walls, it's probably going to be a spring ride. Mm-hmm. Let me say about 90% of the time. So that means that the bump's going to hit a little harder and you don't have enough scraps back there that secure the, run, the load. So that's why I put the low locks, kind of spring them through, quarter way through, so they don't shift on me. Okay. Do you have like a supplier that you uh, you got some type of like folks can get uh, low low bars, low locks through you? No, I wish I did. I'd love to tell you that, but you know, yeah, you, it, gotta that, it, brother. you gotta get it. <laughs> I know. In, in this day and age, everybody want to make all the money they can, especially with everything right. going up. So nobody spare about anything at, at, at the moment, man. They too busy trying to make the money from twenty twenty that they lost. Right. I agree with you. I mean, pandemic hit folks hard, but now they came out swinging. They said, I'm taking everything. OK, I'm coming for it all. Yeah. What are you telling, man? And they've been creative about it, too. <laughs> so uh, I agree, man. All right. So, look, I know you're the, you're you're basically the very first trailer guru I've ever been able to speak with. So, I mean, just by way of operating in this industry. I mean, I, I learned the differences between things, but I'm, I'm trying to get it from the professional here and, you know, tell the folks what's the translucent top and, well, you know, why is that here? Like what's the benefit if there is any, you know, tell me about it. Hold up. That's not just like going to let you come over there. You said a trailer guru, man. You putting a lot of pressure on me, man. Hold up, man. Hey, bro, <laughs> look, man, you better accept it. <laughs> hey, I, I'm going to go ahead and take it. I'm going to go ahead and take it run with it. Let me tell you this. So, the translucent roof. Now, I bought a translucent roof before, two times actually. I paid twelve hundred dollars for it. I beat them down on the price because I told them it's the reason why you're getting rid of this because it's probably leaking already or it's gonna leak. That's why you want to get rid of it because mm-hmm. most of the time those 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 roofs over time they give and you start getting leaks even when you don't have a cut up there. Is that the, the translucent is basically you can the sunlight still come through. It's not aluminum, right? It's some type of fiber, some fiberglass is what it is. So over time, with the sun beat down on it, it just started to crack or it just started mm-hmm. to leak. So now you got product in the back. Guess what? That may end up rejecting it or you have a claim. So those trains with the roof, they, they are they're very tricky. They're tricky. Mm-hmm. Cool. Okay. I, but I, I I do have them. I still keep them. I, I do runs like live unload. I know I'm a, okay. it's, not, it's not raining that day. <laughs> I <right>. say, look, <laughs> go ahead and grab that bad boy right there. Live her up and okay. live unload her. All is well. Right. Yeah. I think the other the other differences with trailers, you know, just for the most part that people, uh, you know, 
brokers are talking about is swing door versus roll up doors. What's your what's your uh, what's your breakdown of swing doors versus roll up doors in your fleet? Gotcha. So I don't have any roll up doors at all. Um, one okay. of the thing about one of, one of the things about roll up doors is a lot of carry a lot of brokers don't like them because the freight can fall back on the door. And now when you're trying to open the door up, it doesn't come. You're having a hard time. It's damn near impossible. So a yeah. lot of people say, we don't want roll-up doors because they're a headache. Then uh, it takes away some of the footage in the back. So you don't get as much room as you would if you had a swing door. Right. There so you got to you gotta, you gotta come off that thing by four or five feet, be on the safe side. So that's why a lot of people don't care for uh, roll-up doors. I don't have them. Um, I think it's great if you want to um, – do a roll-up door if you want to, you're dealing with a particular customer. You go yeah. to a grocery store or some sort because a lot of times they dock doors are down and you can back up and they want to break the seal by rolling up the door and pop your seal that way. That's a lot of the grocery stores like roll-up doors. And if you want to do storage, um, that's a great way of doing it because a lot of times people use your roll-up door as a storage. There's another gym, though. If you did get a roll-up door, you can stop, you can go out and start looking for people who want to use it as storage because a lot of times people like to roll up their uh, – they, um, they door at the building and go right into the trailer. So, and they don't have to have anybody to move the trailer backwards and forwards if it's a swing door. With a swing door, it, once it's backed up, you can't, like, you can't secure it. But if you're using it for storage and somebody like a shipper or, or a broker sending it somewhere, they can, they can always secure that roll-up door by going up and down with it and putting a lock on it. So that's why they like that too because they can, use, they can put their um, extra product in the back. They can go to and from taking things in and out and securing it. So that's one of the reasons why grocery stores and people who store stuff in the back like roll-up doors. Right, because I was definitely used to seeing the roll-up doors, on, you know, as our storage trailers. Um, that was probably, I want to say, if we had if we had 10 to 15 storage trailers, um, I would say the majority of them were roll-up doors. Um, yeah. But I, yeah, but I found, you know, it's hard with the box trucks, bro. If you got a box truck that has a roll-up door, it takes away from your height clearance and... You know, if you have any type of pallets that are, you know, 90 and above on the inches, it's kind of hard to, uh, yep. you know, get that approved with that roll-up door. No doubt. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, brother. So when it comes to, you know, people who are interested, or let's just talk about this, right? Okay. So you got a company. Your company is called Rent My Trailer Now. Yes. And you also have something that you're developing for people who are interested in getting into this industry, correct? Yes, I do. I have a trailer course, man. I've been getting so many people hit me up and saying, Delmar, I didn't realize you can make money doing trailers. I'm like, hold on. First of all, last time I checked, you can't make any money without a trailer with 18 (laughs) wheeler. You have to have a trailer. Even if it's not yours, even if you're doing power only, you are hooking up to a trailer to get product to make money. Mm -hmm. So it's absolutely money in trailers. Right. Now it, it, it may not be truck money because you know the numbers are different. However, it's passive and it's less maintenance. You don't have to have a whole staff. You have to deal with a lot of drivers, personalities. You know, so that's what I, that's one of the things I like about it. You know, it, it's very very. Uh, it, it, you don't have to be so hands on. I don't have to talk to everybody every day about something or, or getting to the ship or the co-signing. The trailers out, they make the payment. It's so it's, it's very passive. And and you can oh. still have a full time job doing this. Okay, yeah. Depending I mean, on how many trailers you get, though. <laughs> right. So I mean, yeah. Depending on how many trailers you get, because it, it get real dicey. What would you What would you advise somebody to start out with? What number of trailers? Well, first, do it anywhere from two to three. Get mm-hmm. your feet wet. Once you get the course, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain to you different things on to make sure you protect yourself. So you can get comfortable with it. You know, you can figure out. I got the templates in there. I got the contracts. I got the certificates in there. I'm showing you what happens if you have a claim, if somebody totaled your trailer out, if you have a fender bend, if somebody have a fender bend in there, if somebody steal your trailer. All this is a breakdown. If somebody steal your tag, I got all these things in here so you will be able to, you know, scale it properly. But I say two to three to make sure, you know, that you like this, is this is something you want to pursue. Then you can go ahead and start scaling. Right. I hear you. I just met somebody or um, somebody that I previously did business with, um, they just invested into three reefers. So um, those should be getting back and getting to them sometime in October. I think they're okay. really excited, but they, they had to pay top dollar, you know, brand new during this uh, 
trailer shortage, they definitely got hit over here with the with the top dollar cost. So. And, and it's so crazy how the value of the, uh, most of my trailers just went up. But let me tell you a little secret, man. I still get my trailers at the same price I got them two or three years ago. Oh, is that mm-hmm. because of your relationships or? A- absolutely, it's the relationships. Yeah. I, I, like I tell people, um, people like, hey, Demo, how do you do that? Because I don't believe that you're still able to get trailers um, for that amount. And I tell them, I say, look, if, if you want to get into the sanitizer business when uh, the pandemic hit, it would be expensive as I don't know what. Because then you got to get the infrastructure, you got to get the employees, then it was limited resources and stuff like that. So you spend a lot. But if you was already in place during the pandemic and you was in a sanitizer business, you made millions. Mm-hmm. I was already in place already. So I, I had the relationship that carried over. So mm-hmm. I was already, the numbers aren't going to change for me. It's just a, a, the numbers changing for everybody else because they realize, you know, we need trailers in order to make money. They're not making any new ones. The new ones are t- down on backlog. So the old thing, all the old trailers now, the value went up. Yeah, very true. Very true. Yeah. It makes sense. And, and I'm going to say another thing, one of the reasons why I went up, because uh, Amazon, you know, they started, everybody started ordering stuff online at the same time in the pandemic. So now you got Amazon hoarding all the trailers in order to get the product to the people. Mm-hmm. It's like everybody stopped going in the stores and everything went on the back of a truck and last mile to get to your, t- to get to your front door. Mm-hmm. So they start grabbing the trailers up left and right. Right. See, I know that they was called, you know, their growth has been unreal exponential over the past you know let's, let's just say five years but i think this was the first year that they actually outsold walmart you know yes. what i mean i just so i just seen the article on that man yeah that's huge like that 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 doesn't just happen that's a that's an anomaly <laughs> you know what I mean? it, it really is you gotta imagine people who never used amazon before they was in their homes they, they took the time now they say let me figure out how to use this app let me go online and order this because i don't i'm too afraid to go in the store so mm-hmm. a lot of people was like, I don't do that. I need to see my groceries. I need to see my paper towels. I need it right now. They jumped online and started ordering stuff, and they started using Amazon. Right. I think the pandemic was uh, probably, uh, the, the I don't know, something golden for them because folks didn't want to leave out of their house. You know what I mean? Yeah. If there was any reason why someone didn't have to leave the comforts of their safe home, uh, they weren't. So they had to find that other source to get that product. Absolutely, man. And that's when the trailers came in, and all of a sudden it was a you know, it's a shortage, and I was like, oh, now people see the value in trailers now. When I first started buying them, I had people tell me, man, you buying old trailers. Nobody's going to use those. You know, why would you do that? I'm like, first of all, I didn't ask you. You the one came over here <laughs> talking to me. You asked me what I did. Now you're going to tell me it's not a good idea with your mm-hmm. one truck and one trailer. <laughs> yeah, man, I hear you there. So yeah. I, I hear, I also hear this, though. Um so Amazon kind of influenced the market, which kind of influenced the way that you made some of your uh, business decisions. Is that is that fair to say? It is. It okay. is, man. Okay. Amazon has so much power, man. People don't even realize it. Yeah, they, they, they can move the market up and down, and we don't even realize it. And we're doing what they're telling us to do. Yeah, that's but true. I, I'm enjoying this ride, to be honest with you, because it just really brings the trailers to the forefront. And I'm I'm so just grateful that I can teach people and show them that you can make passive income with these uh with these trailers, man. You know, I, I'm excited to show people, you know, just the way you can do it from home. Like mm-hmm. you don't have to have CDLs to own a trailer leasing company. That's the beautiful part about it. Mm-hmm. You, no, you don't have to have a DOT number in order to have a leasing company. This is a great way to make passive income. You don't have to have all this knowledge about trucking in order to have a, le- a trailer leasing company. Okay, that's true. I mean, all these things I, I cannot refute at all. Um, they, yeah, they, they, they make sense. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that's the thing. People ask me, Delmar, do I need CDLs? How much experience do I need? Well, no, you don't need that much experience, but you do need to have, have some knowledge about what you're getting yourself into. And that's when my course is going to break down. I'm breaking it down for someone who never seen a trailer before, don't know what it is. I'm I'm on video showing you what a plated trailer is. I'm showing you what the scrap does. I'm in the video showing you what a wood wall trailer is. I'm sh- I'm on the video showing you what an air ride and spring ride is. So when you're done with that course, you feel like, oh, I know exactly what this is. I feel like I feel like Delmar. I'm a trailer ser- I'm a trailer strong certified when I'm done with this course. Hey, hey, you got those t-shirts, right? Hey, I already got them. I'm putting them up to date. No jump, no cap. <laughs> okay. All right. Just wanted to make sure because you know. You can't you can't trademark something once it's already trending. So 
Just go ahead and go ahead and you know get your situation taken care of. Oh, no doubt, it's already approved. It's just gonna take six months to go in and do it. It's a go. Okay, all right. Oh, so anybody want to jump on it? Good luck. It's, it's already in make. It's already in the office. <laughs> <It's emotional>. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Too late. No, I yeah. So um, no, that's awesome, man. And you know, I wanted to ask you about the, uh, you know, what about the other folks? What about the other folks that are huge in the industry in the trailer space specifically? Do they influence you, like the Hyundais, the the Duvals, the Metros, the Compasses, the Great Danes? Like, how do they really play a, a part in your world, if any part? They do, man, because at the end of the day, if they don't have trailers over there, people start searching for other places. They get real creative. They start Googling. They start to try to figure out different ways of getting trailers. So if they run out, that influence me to go up on my rates a little bit more than them. I call over there. I act like a customer. Hey, how you doing? I'm looking for a dry van. What your dry van prices are? Right, they might say, "Oh, it's such and such." I'm like, "Okay, cool. Y'all got any? Oh, we got a backlist. Oh, cool. Say no more." So I got these five over here. Guess what? I may go up another fifty dollars on my trailers. I'm just being honest, because there's a need for it. Uh huh. So they do influence a lot of it. Yeah, I. I mean, I hear you there. I mean, especially the fact that you're uh you're willing to do the market research on a you know on a such a day to day basis. Like you're not just feeling as though your price is your price. You're still out here willing to see what that market is really like so that you can adjust your prices as a business owner. You know, a lot of people set their price and they just leave it. You know, and some people right. say, you know, I think that's even a line in a, you know, set your price and, you know, forget it. But at the same time, I feel as though it probably helps in this market to, uh, you know, to be willing to, um, you know, basically revisit when it when the market calls for it so no yeah, i agree that, that that's smart let me tell you a story what you don't know man um how i started rent my trailer was um a couple guys kept passing by on the yard I was like what you doing with those trailers so i was used to drop them right doing dropping hooks and these particular uh-huh. trailers i wasn't dropping it just went cold the guy was like what you doing with the trailer man let me rent it for me and i'm like nah i'm good man i I'm, i ain't rent my trailer i was like i put locks on my stuff like he looked like he's gonna take my trailer i put a kingpin lock and a glad hand lock I put my car up front. I'm like, man, he was looking, he was looking too anxious. Uh, so then um, I end up getting uh, in trouble with DOT, uh, with RDL. I, I end up going conditional. So my rating, I, we kept going through the scale houses and getting rolled up. And they came, they visited me and told me, look, we're going to shut you down. You are very reckless. Your drivers are awful. And I'm like, yo, it was just them going through the law, you know, not pre-tripping, not doing their logs, not keeping up with it. This is when we're doing paper logs. And uh, I end up, um, they end up visiting me, end up finding me seven thousand dollars, and I thought about it myself. Like, yo, if my trucking company closed down right now, what am I gonna do? I'm mm-hmm. in trouble. And that's like, you know what? I was like, I need to think of a pass away. And I was like, okay, cool. And then, then I heard the guy, you know, voice in my mind, I'm like, hey, you, you, you were in that trailer, man. I'm like, you know what? Maybe I should look into this. So I saw, I decided to go. I went to the metros, I can like a customer with the Duvals. I went to the uh, to all the other guys around the way, and I started gathering information. Then I went to Renaissance. And I went to uh, I went to Renaissance and I was like, yo, how do y'all rent stuff out? I act like I was going to get a little flat screen. So they took me through the whole process. So I grabbed some stuff from Renaissance and I grabbed some stuff from Metro and all the big boys. And I created my own contract to start leasing trailers. Because mm-hmm. I realized Metro didn't want to rent to people. Or maybe they changed their rules. I don't know. Just saying at the time, they didn't want to rent to new authority. They want you had to have uh, so many years, so many revenue and uh, the credit and all kind of thing. It was a lot of red tape. So what I did was I said, I'm going I'm to uh, end up servicing people who have new authority. So what happened, people, when I started to listen to them, they was a little nervous, like, man, I don't know who this guy is. So I was like, look, I'll mentor you. Since you're so new, I know more than you. You can call me anytime you got any problems. And right. that's what sold people on getting trailers from me. Because it's like, okay, cool. I can't go wrong. If I ask him a question, he's going to help me out. He's like a mentor for free. So I started doing that. I started renting the trailers out and mentoring people as they went on. And that's we and, and, and word of mouth over time. They're like, "Hey, Delmar's really dope. He gave out great advice." So I was answering my phone morning and night, just answering whatever questions I can answer, so that I can build my rapport. I must the drivers and other people can hear about it. I hear you, brother. I hear you. And that word of mouth started uh, growing like wildfire, huh? It did, man. And, and it really it just took off for me because people were like, "Yo!" Then all of a sudden, people just start calling for advice. I'm like, you don't want a trailer? No, nah, man. But I heard <laughs> you just give really good advice. I'm like, oh my goodness. All right, because <laughs> that's how it goes. Once you start, uh, you know, making yourself uh, a resource um, for those type of things, people are going to start utilizing you exactly for that. So, you no know, doubt. Yeah, but it, it it's one of those costs that you have to pay up front in order to 
get the uh, rapport with the industry that you need. You know, yep. you, sometimes you got to You got to you got to pay for it with your time. And, uh, you know, I'm learning that and I'm enjoying that. Uh, but it's just something that I, I'm really just understanding. Um, it, it just comes with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But a lot of people don't want to put the time in. They, they'll yeah. look up and they say, oh, hey, Delmar, you got a fleet. I want to do what you're doing. So they just feel like they can jump over to all this stuff and get right to the fleet. Yeah, uh-huh. and, 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 you know, I got a nice Honda Accord. I don't have a Honda Accord. Just use the example. People want to get right to the Honda Accord and just start driving. But they mm-hmm. don't want to take the steps to get to that point to get the Honda. How about get your credit for get, get Get your credit straight. How about get a job? How about be more consistent? These mm-hmm. are the things that are going to lead you to the Honda Accord. These are the things that will help you get to a fleet of trailers. These are the things that will help you get to a fleet of trucks. But you're going to have to take these steps. There's no way around it. You're going to have to put the work in. You're going to have to grind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Uh, I mean, because sometimes I've even been that person. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, the success is right there. Let me just step over there. And then I realize, uh-uh, you, you got to, it's, it's, it's much farther. It's, you yeah. got to build the systems. You got to do the work, man. You got to do the work. And, you know, there is no shortcut. You might have somebody that can get you there a little bit quicker just because of who you know, but to create anything that's going to, you know, last the test of time, it's going to take work. You got to do it. So, and, and, and that's the thing I see people doing right now, man. And one of the things I've done too, one, uh, over the years, people are jumping in with new authority and they make some mistakes. I end up buying their trailers from them because what mm-hmm. happens is they see the end result of what we're doing and say, I can do that too. And they have these comfortable months when they were able to profit. And then they say, okay, this is our life going to be going forward. Then month four and five, reality hits when they have turbos go out, motors go out, drivers quitting, slow months, and all this thing. So they end up losing a lot of the stuff. And I was end up buying their trailers pennies on the dollar because they just need to get off under it. So that's the illusion of trucking and transportation is that you're going to win because you have the equipment. But at the same time, I, you need to pocket all that money until you get a nice cushion. And, you know, you start to scale, then you can start spending People, they, they, this, this little facade they got out here, like you can be, you know, it's so easy and passive that you're just going to win in a month or two. You can sit back and put your regular nine to five. That's untrue. It's not true at all. Yeah, man. So, look, let's uh, shift in gears a little bit. You okay. Know. I know I know this situation from me being a dispatcher for a corporation, right? This is This is what the situation was. You got some very, very, very inclement weather. Most time it's going to be Florida, Alabama. You might even go, you know, towards Texas sometimes. You know, not too many times, but sometimes. Right. It's hurricane season. We know to get to those places, it's dangerous. It's, it's oh, going, yeah. You got you to gotta have a driver that, one, is on some other stuff. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because a regular driver says, you know, I see risk. I see uh, chances of accident. Let me avoid these accidents. So you got to have somebody that's willing to drive into the danger, uh, into the places where the lights are out. You know, there might be there might be uh, you know the actual electric wires in the street or something yep. like that. So you know, I'm basically painting the picture because you, sir, are you know you you're you're sending your your trailers into these environments and you're yep. doing it you know basically with consistency. Why is that? <laughs> Look. One of the things is I, when the, when a disaster does happen, I'm just grateful that I'm able to help. Right. That's that's the first thing. So yes, I'm sir. looking at it like I, I'm giving a service. People need blankets, generators, batteries, waters, and uh and, and food. And that's the one's the first thing I think about is helping. I'm I'm giving them a service of something they need. Yes, sir. Second, right. That's the first thing. And number two is the disaster is going to happen regardless. Either I'm going to do it or someone else. So I mm. choose to do it. I, I choose to do it. However, it comes with a price. And I charge them accordingly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, right? But then I, I make sure my drivers understand and the people I deal with what we're doing and what the reasons are. Right? And and, I, and, and, the, and me being an expert when it comes to this, I can tell them what I see and what's going on. I'm checking the roads. I'm checking I'm checking with the sergeants, asking them, is the road clear before you when, if they can get there? What roads should they take? What drivers have been out there already? Talking to the sergeant, can you tell me that driver who just made it to the gate, what role he took to get there, and how was the conditions? This is something <laughs> that people don't know. So I ask those questions. So when my drivers get over there and say, hey, Highway 42 is good to go, take it all the way over there. Oh, it's 100 miles out of the way? It is. However, you ain't going to have to worry about power lines, flooding, uh, inclement weather that's still kind of active. You get all that you know, inland water. 
take this road, it's going to take you all the way there. So that's one of the things I do. And that's a little gem for y'all too. If y'all did, y'all did decide to do that. Check the um, check your uh, the satellite and see what the roads are like. See if there's anything closed. Get with drivers in that direction. You know anybody there asking what the roads are, how how they are. Go to the uh, you can go to the websites too and check the traffic on there. The roads over there in the condition. So that's one of the ways I get my drivers to go over there. I give them confidence that whatever they're going, they don't have to deal with something that's going to you know put them in a situation where they can lose their life. True. Um, they so that they you know, protect themselves, but also they protect your equipment because I can imagine, you know, although those loads, you know, are high paying, it, it'd be kind of like a inconvenience to have one of them go down, you know, in such a, you know, a place. So yeah. like that kind of, that kind of like takes me to, you know, what's the insurance cost like on a trailer to have a trailer and to feel as though you're protected. Like what type, what's that insurance like? And the insurance is not bad. If you lease in it, it, say that you just basically coming from a perspective. If I was getting into the business and I had to cover it for somebody that was leasing, that's what you're getting at. Yeah. Okay. The insurance is not bad at all, man. The the, the, the truck is more expensive than the trailer. The trailer yeah, to run you in it, right. The trailer run you anywhere from fifty to a hundred dollars a month on the high end, but really it's like fifty forty dollars a month. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah, that's, that's very doable. Yeah, it's very doable. Like literally, that's why you can make the passive. It doesn't. The insurance doesn't eat you up. Like the truck does. The truck is the most expensive thing. People tell you, you know, the the truck, the the physical damage on the truck, you know, and you got to have a million dollars on this. Like, yo, that that's a lot. I get it. That's why that's the bulk of your money that you're spending each month when it comes to trailer. Not so much. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So let's just take it back to that um, that picture. So the folks went out in the inclement weather. They made it yeah. to you know the site. Um, let's just say that they actually dropped off. But on the way out, you know, they get hemmed up or something happened to the trailer. Does that always come back to you and your insurance or is it ever their insurance, the driver that's taking care of that? Well, one of the cool things about the government, which is funny to say that, right? But um, right. <laughs> they take they take care of the trailer. So when you lease it out to them, it's pictures being taken and it's conditions being checked as it goes through the gate. So mm-hmm. they're right down what they see and they're responsible for it in the end. So what happens is I've had my trailer damaged before and um, I, I get my, once they done with it, my driver take a look like, Hey, that door is hanging. I'm like, Oh my gosh, if they don't catch it already, most of the time they catch it and they just fix it. They go send it to the local guy around and they fix it or whatever. But say for instance, we see it. We, uh, we, we let it sit there and we say, look, yeah, I got to fix this before we come back. It's not the old, it, it wasn't like that. Go back and look at your pictures. Go back mm-hmm. and look at your preacher, the preacher seat, seat, and see that it wasn't tore up. Okay, cool. We all on the same page. Cool. Y'all need to fix that. And I still, I'm still charging you as if you still had it. True. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. And that's good to know about the, uh, you know, that they are making sure that they're they're on it like that, making sure that they are able to get it back in the same condition that they took it from. Um, yeah, that's good to know. Like yeah. I said, whenever I did it, oh, go ahead. My bad. Go ahead. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm agreeing with you. I'm agreeing. Yeah. Uh, whenever, whenever I was dispatching trucks to go out there, my, number one, the only product we took out there was water. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was right. not, not really an easy feat, you know, high winds, you got all this liquid just, uh, bouncing around. But, um, you know, I don't, I don't think there was ever a claim or an issue with our trailers, um, going out there, but, it did make me interested to say, you know, since it is this environment, um, I know you're getting hazard pay for actually going out there, but who is, who's footing the bill on any damages, but you, you clear that up clearly. It's the government. It's the government. Yep. Now you don't talk to them uh, per se, but you really dealing with the sergeants that people on base who kind of documented stuff and they got a running tab in a way, so to speak. I don't know what they call it. I look at it like a running tab because he just gets speaks. I don't know who, does it, who's approves it, but it gets done through them and I don't have to sign anything. I just get my trailer back in the condition that I gave it. Yeah. All right. Okay. 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 And you know, so with your fleet, right, you said it's fluctuating the number, but let's just go ahead and call it 150. You said it's all 150. Yeah. Okay. Let's so let's talk about technology. What, what type of technology are you, you using that helps you keep track of those trailers? Because brother, they're everywhere. Like, yeah. You, you know, matter of fact, answer this question before we go there. You are based out of Georgia, Metro Atlanta, Georgia, correct? Yes, that's correct. 
150 trailers. How many trailers are still in the metro Atlanta area? I'm going to say about 60. 60. 60. Yeah, about 60. Which means that's a good amount of trailers that are everywhere. You got you got these agreements uh, for different lengths of time. You know, folks got to, you know, everybody got their own uh, agreement in the terms with that. But yes. how do you keep track of all of that stuff? How do you track the trailer? You know what I mean? Okay, so I have an, I have an employee who was designated just to rent my trailer now. So they, they keep up with the contracts and they got software that's always binging them, letting them know that it's getting close to renewal time and an accident. At least see, do they want to keep it or they want to bring it back? So that's one of the things that we do right now. That's pretty simple, man. That's not bad. Now, if you guys want to use the same software I use, you can inbox me. I'm going to send you a link. Okay. And it's going to save you $25. If you go down yourself, you're going to pay the full price. But if you use my, uh, my, uh, my code, you get twenty five dollars off, and it's called Budget GPS. Okay, okay, yep. Budget GPS. Okay. So follow me on Instagram. It's, it's Trailer Strong, Trailer Strong, like the muscles. Trailer Strong. Inbox me. I send you the link. Send you the code. You you put it in. You save twenty five dollars, and that's how I follow my stuff. And then San Macero too. I use them um, as a secondary. So I keep two GPSs. And I never said this before. I keep two GPSs on my trip. Okay. Yeah, that's smart. You know, you need redundancy in something so important. Yeah. So one can go out, then you got another as a backup. Okay. So basically, somebody trying to run off with your equipment, one, you already know where they are. Two, I mean, is is this giving too much juice if I ask you, no. you know, what, what you got to do if somebody try to run off? No, it's in the course too, man. I can never give enough sauce on this. Because, okay. you know, well, here's the thing. If it's called theft by conversion. I don't know how many people want to go to prison for a trailer. Raise your hand. <laughs> I, I'm looking down. Anybody want to go to prison for a trailer? It ain't worth it. So so people think, oh, they're going to run off with it. Nobody want to get a year in county for a 53 driving. It ain't worth it. So I don't True. have a lot of those problems. What happens is you have people that don't want to pay, and they just drag the trailer back a little slower. But you don't have nobody just running off just being a, a, a butt about it and want to be a, want to be a, you know, have a misdemeanor. No, nobody wants that. And I had yeah, somebody nobody. who has, let me give you an example. I had a lady who leased a trailer out from me who had an owner operator. She I had him on a contract. He ran off with the trailer. She's still responsible for it. Now for like four months, she, didn't, she kept saying, oh, I'm going to get it. I'm going to pay you. And she stopped paying. So I just kind of went and got my little lawyer, paid him $500. He sent her a nice little kind letter saying, you need to get this back to him or he would not going to pursue it further. Within two weeks, when she, she got that letter, we kindly Send it to a judge. The judge signed off on it, saying this is something I need to look into. So then we said to her, look, this is what's going to happen. If you go to court, you're going to get a year in jail because you're going to lose. Yeah. And it's pandemic time. I don't know you want to go into jail when it's corona because that's, that's, that's close quarters. Right. She thought about it. We came up with a number. She cut a check. Delmar was happy. All right. All right. That's it. And you, and you went through the legal means exactly the way that you were supposed to do it. You know, most people, you know, get a little ahead of themselves. Oh, just like, oh, the audacity of somebody to try to, you know, hold on to my trailer longer than I was supposed to. But no, nah, the, the, the system is there for a reason. So I appreciate you explaining how you use the system to get back what you was rightfully yours. So absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. OK. OK. So. You know, that's if somebody tried to run off with your trailer. What's right. the worst condition somebody brought a trailer back to you, though? Uh, door hanging, four tires, rip walls. So that ended up coming up to be like $2,000. Uh, mm. One of the mistakes, yeah, one of the mistakes I made was in the beginning, I was so I was trying to be mindful of everybody with new authority because most of the time people get their authority, get the insurance. They get low on cash by the time they get the trailers because they took so much money to get going. They they running out of resources and they just really want to get on the road. My deposit was too low because I was so mindful, just want to get my name out there. Mm-hmm. And then when they brought it back, the deposit didn't cover it. So I'm over here, doggone, damn near begging them to pay for the stuff they tore up. Mm. So I had to go up on my deposits. Okay, okay. So that's because you were catering your business more to the mom and pop shop. I was. I really was. Just trying to get my name out of there and just say, look, hey, it's worth – look, my trailers are older. My trailer – you don't know me. Whatever the, the situation was, it was different scenarios, but the deposit low. So I was trying to make it more attractive. I was trying to 
beat the metros and everybody else. So I was like, I'm gonna drop my deposit and say I trust you. I know you're gonna do the right thing. And I'll, I'll be honest, I'm gonna say about 98 percent of the people did the right thing. Okay, okay. So you know, it helped more people than people that kind of burned you. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. And, it, and that's why you go on my uh, on my Twitter now. You check my reviews. Uh, people are going to tell you that they had a good experience with because I really honestly try to make sure I do right by people and, 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 they, and they, they feel it. So they want to do the right thing by me when it's all said and done too. Yeah. And no, I agree, man. Uh, people, people know when folks are trying to do good versus, you know, just trying to make a buck, you know, yep. uh, there we it, go. It, it feels a lot different when you know that somebody is, you know, really there for you and not just trying to fast talk. You would get some quick money. So, um, I always say this one thing, you know, I'm trying to try to make long money, you know, not quick money, not fast money, long yep. money. And it comes by, you know, just being integrous and, um, you know, just really being transparent with folks, letting them know what your intentions are and, uh, you know, just doing that. I mean, going from there. So, um, no, I, I, I'm, I'm happy that more people benefited from your services versus, um, those that try to take advantage. Absolutely, man. I changed so many lives. I had people get multiple trailers, two or three trailers, and they was able to hire people, which means they was able to hire people that, you know, that could feed their families and their families would be able to take care of other families. So it was, just, it was bigger than me. It was bigger than just giving them a trailer. I was able to, to help somebody build their dream. Their dream was to have their own authority. Their dream was to have a truck and they got it. And I was a part of that dream. So it just felt real special to me. It was bigger than me. Yeah. I definitely, I, I hear you, brother. I hear you. And, you know, thank you again for, you know, being able to help so many people out doing that. Um, no so when it comes down to it, you know, I know that we've been talking for a good little bit now, but I, I mean, it's because you got so much information. That's, I mean, that's, that's well, I appreciate it. you. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. I like giving it away, man. That's the thing. I, I like giving it away, honestly. Like when I yeah. get on these platforms, I want to give you the sauce. I don't right. want to give you the fluff. I talk fast, give a lot of energy because I'm trying to get it out there fast. Right. All right. I so want you to get it. Yeah. No, I, I got you, man. I got you. And so do you feel as though um, you're able to apply this model or have you personally, you, uh, Delmar, apply this model to any other industry, you know, whether it be real estate, Toro, vending machines or anything like that? Um, no, man. Honestly, though, no. Uh, not really. Honestly, it's all transportation. Like I have a boom that I help people. I'm going to tell you a quick story that I was breaking down when I first started with my authority six years ago. And I was in situations where I'm like, yo, I can't keep breaking down. I'm going to have enough money. I started searching around because I didn't want to use a tow truck. And I seen this thing you put on the back of your fifth wheel. And I was like, yo, what is that? They said, oh, you can use it two fifty, three hundred dollars $300 a day. And I was like, well, let me get that to go get my truck. So I used it and I came back and I was like, yo, people need this. They can use this to tow their trucks back. So I went and bought one, and I started putting signs up all over Atlanta. I put them in all the shops, all the savage places and everywhere, and I started getting people to call me. So I started sending them text messages of YouTube on how to use them. I kept telling them it's a four-step. So I, I kind of apply some of the trailer stuff to when I got these, these booms I call them, a.k.a. lifts. They put them on your fifth wheel. So I got two of those things, and I was able to help people who was in financial strain, bad situations, and didn't want to pay thousands of dollars to get their truck back out of Canada or somewhere. And they didn't trust the mechanic. So they didn't have the money at the time and they didn't want to lose their truck because the storage was piling up on it because it was sitting there. So I, I, I used some of this stuff from trailers to put it into these lifts slash booms. So to answer your question, I kind of applied that to the, those things I got. And I was able to make over $100,000 each year with both of them. Boom. See, that's what it is. It's just being able to turn these assets into returns and it sounds like man you, you found you found the recipe you got the sauce and the fact is you've been uh, so willing to share and i just want to say thank you i know that i want to uh you know give time for people to ask questions okay. um, so if people want to go ahead and start at, uh, raising their hands that's cool with me um it's actually appreciated just because i don't know how many times you're going to be able to uh, have access to someone that has all of this information. Um, but in the meantime, uh, let's just talk about the trucking millionaire tour. Okay. So yeah. you're going to be a part of that too. Once it actually comes here to Atlanta, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's going down September 10th to the 12th. I was invited from them, uh, from trucking guru and uh, trucking millionaires. It was like Delmar. We like what you're doing. We didn't know 
uh, that you existed. We see what you're doing. It's amazing. You are uh, helping people in the community. You're giving out so much more information. Can you do this over here when we come over here on September the 10th and the 12th? And I was like, absolutely. I love to be a part of it. Okay. Yeah, man. Um, I, once I found that, that you were going to be a part of it, um, I said, that's perfect. You know, they're coming to this man's city. They got to, uh, you know, they got to respect what he got going on. And I know you're about to just be able to add so much value to that situation. Um, do you have any information about how folks can um, participate or, you know, any of that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah. Um, you can go to uh, Trucking Guru's page, click the link in the bio. You can see the trucking millionaire. She has it all there. You can click on there. Um, I think what's left is the general emission tickets. Um, there's not a lot left. It's like people heard that I was on there. People just started to figure out what I'm doing. And they're like, yo, this guy going to be teaching this. You know, I'm going to be giving more stuff that I haven't told you on here. It's more gems, stuff that you can execute, stuff that you can genuinely walk out of that building and go make money if you execute it right. right. That's what I'm giving on that stage up there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, I love to hear it, man. I definitely love to hear it. And, uh, you know, folks, all I'm trying to say, is, I'm, this is all I got to say about this. Um, these are folks that are really operating out here and they might really be in a spot to, you know, give you that information that you are waiting to get so that you can, you know, get past that problem or whatever, whatever. So nope. just, you know, just use this as a, as a resource is all I got to say. Absolutely, man. One, one thing I've learned too, man, all it takes is one, somebody can say one thing and that it can spark an idea in your mind that you can go out here and start figuring out another side of the business. You can figure out a problem, start making revenue. You can figure out a problem, start making passive income. But you got to get in the room and, and you got to get around these brilliant minds. People feel like if, if I can, I can, I'll figure it out. And if I keep Googling, I'll figure it out if I keep getting on YouTube, but it's very limited. And you're going to go through two hours of content to get all that fluff to get one piece of information. Well, these conferences that well, we, they, they're putting together that I'm invited to, they're giving gems out. We get up there. We're not going to waste your time. We getting on that stage and telling you stuff that you can execute. You're going to walk out of there thinking like, yo, I need to get a truck. Yo, I need to get a trailer. Yo, I need to go ahead and get a hot shot. What I need to do. I need to go run my credit and get a loan. That's how you feeling when you walk out of the building. Yeah. No, I, I, with actionable, like, checklists on things that you can do. So, no, I definitely, I definitely hear you, brother. Um, so, look, we did have a couple folks that joined the stage. Um, is it Miss Aisha? Aisha? Yes, it's me. Hi, Jerry. Hi, De- Hi, everyone. Yes, thanks for bringing me up. I appreciate the topic. A lot of people don't talk about trails, but it's so important. Because you can't haul anything without a trailer. So I'll try to make it quick. Um, my first question is, people always ask me about trailer tails. Are they still, um, are people still interested in getting them? I've had a tr- one trailer fire before. So that's one part of the question. My second question is, is the rule still, if you have a skirt, you need to get a tail? Um, my third question is, um, do people still put their names inside of the trailers? I had a 28, I had a, a pup trailer stolen. And um, it went to the scrapyard. And my fourth question is, um, have you ever had a trailer come over from Canada like I had? And I had I had I had to wait six months to be able to use it because customs tied me up. Well, look, before you start, Delmar, that was (laughs) was a lot of questions. (laughs) That was a lot of questions. No, no, it's not an issue. It's just like. Um, you know, Delmar, feel free to ask her to repeat some of those questions, man. Yeah, <laughs> man, it was, it was a lot. I'm right, panicking. Ahead, I started looking for an opinion. I'm like, yo, I'm in, I'm in trouble. Um, <laughs> with, the, with the skirts, I, I've, I've been told that you, you need a tail. However, I don't even like dealing with those skirts a lot of times. You can get in situations where these shippers have these dips and these drops and um, they have um, uneven pavements and stuff, and those things can be a nightmare. You know, so I don't even deal with that, those type of things. Yeah, it's kind of good on fuel. Don't get me wrong. But uh, it's more of an inconvenience for a lot of drivers more so than anything. But, um, yeah, I have seen people say uh, you need a tail if you got the skirt. But I don't think it's illegal. But it's just it's kind of kind of productive where you don't have all, everything working together to save you on the fuel. So that's one of the reasons why they kind of ask you to kind of have it. It's not like a DOT thing. Last time I checked. Um, but what other questions you said? Some, a trailer from Canada? I, I haven't had anything come out of Canada. Um Thank, thankfully, I, I, I tell you about my problem. Go ahead. Well, yeah, I haven't had anything come out of Canada. I never bought anything or anything like that. Um, 
if anybody was leasing my trailers, they, that's that whatever issues they got, it's on them. I have nothing to do with that. I'm just waiting on the payment to come through. Okay, well, my problem, unfortunately, and I told the person not to get anything that's usually too good to be true probably is. And it was, of course, a Canadian title. And I told this brother, I said, you should have waited for them to give you the actual title so you can use it. So he went over to Cab County and, and they were like, yeah, just have the sheriff deputy come out and verify it's not stolen, blah, blah, blah. We had to go through customs to get, it took six months. Do not get a Canadian title trailer and try to put it on the road. It, it's going to be hell. That's all. And I got that in my course too. I, I put this in here. I tell people, look, and when it comes to purchasing trailers, making sure that you have a title that matches the VIN plate. You got to take that title and match the VIN plate. And, and if, they, if the title looks sketchy, they don't have it, don't purchase it. You can tell, you can this is this. I got this in my course, y'all getting this for free. Tell that gentleman, he or she, to go down to the local uh, tag and uh, the tag place, what they call it, tag and title, to verify that title. If, if you got it and you lost it, let's go verify it. Then they can print it off right then and there. Or it looks kind of sketchy. Let's go down there and have the, the title and tag place verify that title is real. So don't ever purchase anything you can't put your hands on with a title because then it could be they could have pawned the title because they had tough times. They lost it or they sold it to someone else. Now they're selling it again. They might have told the guy, hey, this is your trailer. I'm giving you the title. And he ain't got the trailer yet. But then they go back and sell it to you and you go buy it. Now he done sold it twice without a title. But that the the uh, officer over at um, at the cab told us that they have had six trailers come over and this was um during the pandemic six trailers come over and the people couldn't use them so they're they're putting them into the market over here and i just wanted to warn people put that out as a caveat to to oh. be where they're dumping those trailers here i appreciate you what was the other two questions you had i don't think i, I don't remember the question I, i'll just ask them you know do people still because of the the heat factor is it necessary when it comes to a trailer tail you said Yes and no. You you need all three. You need the, the, the skirt and and you need the tail. And right. the next question was EPA, but the EPA didn't put requirements in the phase two of the um the uh the the, the little gases thing. So it, that's it. I appreciate your time so much. Thank oh, you guys. Welcome. All right, all right. Look, we do have a couple other folks that uh, have raised their hand. Uh, I should thank you so much for those very specific questions. We need those. We need oh, yeah. those because people, you know, as you talk about the things that you're growing through, you know, people can avoid some of those things. So, oh, thank yeah. you. all right. So we do have Miss Striving. I talk to her all the time. Please go ahead and introduce yourself um, and let us know what your question is. Hey, Jory. Hey, guys. I'm Delma. Thank you for the room, Jory. It's great information. I'm just going to get straight to the point. I just want to ask Delma, do he have any trailers <laughs> for rent right now? <laughs> well, at, not at the moment. We got a waiting list. You know, um, I'm still fixing some and getting them ready. And I'm, you know, I, I had to be respectful about people who already reached out on the waiting list. So we're working our way through it. So to answer your question, I don't have anything at the moment, but we are working very, really hard on getting more trailers in to service uh, the new customers that are coming. So keep uh, make sure you go to my website, rentmytrailernow.com. Send us a message. We'll lock you in. So when we get something coming in, we're going to hit you up. Thank you, sir. Roger, how many, how many trailers are you looking for? One. Okay. 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 That's growth. You know, yeah. so what y'all got y'all semi? Yes, sir. All right. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, so what's up with the dispatching? Because, you know, you know, we were supposed to be keeping each other accountable. What's up with that? <laughs> it is going. It's going. Okay. It's going. Okay. Well, we can we can talk offline about that sometime this okay. week. But, uh, you know, appreciate you for coming up. No problem. Thanks, Jory. Bye-bye. Anytime. All right. All right. So we also have brother RJ. What's up, man? How you doing today? Hey, what's going on, y'all? Peace, bro. I appreciate y'all letting me on. Um, it's an honor, man. I actually was was on a truck and hustle last night, like in the middle of the night, watching your, your interviews, brother. So it's, it's kind of strange just to randomly come across you on Clubhouse the very next morning or the very next day. Um, I was um, I was looking on on the dad board, like I, you know, I'm very familiar with the dad board. I'm a, I'm a freight broker. Um, I'm trying to understand, like, okay, which is system that you use with the trailers. Like, I, I get what you're doing, but how, what it, what are you looking under on that? 
to like locate those low, not the verbiage. I'm sure like, you know, with experience comes you with the verbiage in the description, you could tell what it is. But like, are you looking for like local, like local, uh, like I get not, not power, like lo- like local trailer only? Like what, like what's identifying those type of lows for like the, uh, the drop in, what was the term you used earlier? Uh, I actually didn't use that term here. No, nah, not the drop in hook. The, uh, yeah, like the lows where you just where they just where you just drop the trailer sure. and they hold on oh, to it for the next day. Yeah, like like don't get me wrong, like on numerous occasions, like I've came across those type of situations, but it seemed like you got something down packed, like where you could identify it off the rip. Like, is there like a certain criteria on the dat board where those are all going under, or you just have to like sort through? Gotcha. Hey, and the first thing I want to say is appreciate you watching the Truck and Hustle Man um, and taking the time to, to to check me out. That means a lot for me because I'm just like you, bro. I hear us and trying to grind and. You taking the time out to, to see what I got going on. That means a lot for me. And to answer your question, um, yeah, I do have a little systems that I got. I'm going to be doing a uh, a Zoom on a FEMA because I was going to put it on my uh, my course, but it's too doggone complicated. It's too many moving parts with the FEMA stuff. I caught myself just writing it down and trying to explain it in a way that it was too difficult. Um, so I will be doing something separate for FEMA because it's a lot of moving parts with it. And um a lot of people don't want FEMA stuff with the course. They just want passive income. So I didn't want to put that all in something that people didn't want. So to answer your question, um, yes, it's, it's ways of looking at it because a lot of times they hide what the product is because they don't want to pay you top dollar to go help them. So it's, it's this different things you can do. Let me give you a couple of gems, man, because you took the time to do this. Um, any Anytime you, it's a disaster, something hitting, a hurricane heading towards that direction, or tornadoes, if People have, you ask them, first of all, the broker sound always, they always sound frantic. They don't call. They're like, hey, I got a merchy load. First of all, when you say a merchy load, I already know that this is something that's paying top dollar. Second is, if you're watching what's going on in the world, you should know that if you, anything going to Texas, anything going thing to Louisiana, if it's water, batteries, blankets, ask them what the commodity is. Because then that's another way of figuring out if this is a high value load or is this a, a merchy load. Because I had a couple of guys get out to when me told me they was like, oh, just batteries. Oh, it's batteries going to Louisiana when it's a doggone hurricane that's coming through there. They just just, just want batteries. They just, they just want blankets all of a sudden in the summertime. No, they just want tarps. No, there's tarps up for their roof. So I understand that I know what this is. And I know, and I tell them, I know what this is. This sounds like it's an emergency load. And if you want me to do it and go over there, you got to pay me a little bit more than that. Got you, got you. Yeah, man, I, I'm gonna definitely DM you, bro. I, I look forward to uh to doing some business with you soon, man. I I, I award you, I commend you in what you're doing. Um, it's very different. And anytime a brother's like like really like ironing out kinks and and figuring out different ways to to you know do something that's obvious, I, I think is real dope. <laughs> so I appreciate you, bro, and what uh, you're doing. I appreciate you, man. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, RJ. Hey, man. Appreciate you for uh coming up. And asking your question, um, and for even dropping uh, truck and hustle because brother Ronell, hey man, he's known out here in these streets. And yeah, man, he's doing it big. He's doing it at a level that you know most people never even imagined. So, um, man, he the real goat. <laughs> yeah, folks, look, we be getting so much information from what he has going on. Like, I don't know if you guys know, but uh, he moved his. He got a lot of stuff on Patreon, you know what I mean? And it's, it's subscription-based, but it's well worth it. So I would just Absolutely. say, yeah, y'all go check out Truck, Truck and Hustle on Patreon. Uh, you know, I'm personally, I'm on the, you know, the top tier of membership because I respect what he's doing so much. You know, it's just like um, being able to talk to, um, bring all of these entrepreneurs and people who are doing it at a, a, at a, a high level and getting them to, you know, just talk about their experiences. People learn so much just from, you know, watching those podcasts. So, right. and, um, and you can learn more. I hate to cut you off. You can learn more when you pay. When you pay, you pay attention. When people, oh, yeah. <laughs> so when you get in those rooms That's in there, those guys, are answer, right, right. When you get in those rooms in there, those guys answer deep questions for you. See how I just gave you that stuff, um, RJ, just a little bit. It's so much more to it. When you pay, you get a whole lot more, but people don't want to put no money up. They just want you to get everything free. See, what, the stuff that's free don't taste the best anyway. You ever go and get that free water from McDonald's? It's got a little, little tang on it. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, man, it sounds like they had Coca-Cola, the high C in there, and the ice cubes, like they just went out there and snatched them off the roof of a snowman because it's free. But when you go out there and buy it, you, put, you spend 4 or $5, you get an Evian water, it's no taste. 
So when you put some money on what you're trying to invest, your, you're trying to invest in yourself, you get back value. So that's why I say the Patreon thing, what, what Ron them doing over there, Trucker Hustle, pay. You'll learn so much more. You'll get it further. Then you could be on this platform talking at some point. But go ahead, y'all. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I couldn't have said that any better. And RJ, last thing, man, I know I'm talking to you a lot, but it's also because of your name. That's the name of my LB, bro. And he just closed his first million dollar deal today. So wow. in celebration of my LB, uh, you know, just I'm, I'm happy that this situation's being recorded. Um, and, you know, he's going to hear this on a podcast sometime. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just very excited about that. So shout out to him. I hope you get a million dollar deal sometime soon and everybody on this stage. So um, that's that the part. situation. And now we got our brother, Desi. Desi, what's up, man? How you doing? Oh, man, you know, everything, everything. <laughs> I've been out here just making moves, man. But, um, yeah, I saw my big brother, um, Delmar, and, you know, had to pull up on him. Because, what, what's um, happening, bro? Man, you already know what it is. A lot of people don't know, man. That's my mentor. That's my ace, George. You know, so, hey, you know, he's a genius, man. He's a genius because, you know, I talk to, I have access, and I've met a lot of people. But the big thing that I'm trying to do is reduce the overhead. People want that shiny truck, but, man, that shiny truck is a moneymaker. Make no mistake about it. But there's a lot of overhead that comes with it. And what he's doing, man, lowering that overhead, but still having that consistent revenue generated is genius. And I just, you know, man, I just had to come give him, a, you know, a cigar, a shot of cognac and all that, you know. <laughs> hey, I appreciate you, stuff bro. Mixed with it, too, you know, but I had to just come say that. And, Jory, you know, you you know, you already know how me and you rock. So, man, I ain't been on Clubhouse all day because, you know, I've been, I've been in the trenches. But, right. you know, that's part of the game. I don't cry about it. Um, but, it's you know, it's just part of the game, and, you know. But, man, these trucks, bro, people jumping at them and snapping at them, but it's a lot of overhead associated. So, again. Absolutely, man. Well, look, uh, Desi, man, you already know. Uh, thank you so much for coming up to the stage. Say what's up. Appreciate um, you too, bro. <laughs> look, I don't, I don't know if everybody know Desi, but I'm pretty sure a good amount of folks that do. Um, this brother – uh, used to teach a lot of folks on the on this platform, Transportation Logistics Clubhouse. Um, but now they got their own situation that's booming. You know, they got their own podcast. It's the Truck and Breakfast Club. So, oh yeah, uh, go, yeah, go check that out. You know, um, we we shout out everybody around here. So <laughs> y'all go check out his situation. Um, it is, um, hey man, it, it's fire. That's all I got to say. So. If y'all got any questions for him, please follow him. I'm just going to go ahead and say definitely follow Delmar because, you know, he got the information about trailers. Um, and we have one last person that joined the stage and uh, somebody that just raised a hand, but I'm going to be closing this, uh, turning off the actual hand raising in one minute. So um, that's your warning. Uh, Chris, welcome to the stage. Please introduce yourself and let us know what your question is. Hey, good evening, everyone. Thank you for taking my call. Delmar, Joey, thank you very much. Uh, question is, uh, Delmar, do you have a course coming out? Will it be coming out? How soon will you let that out so that way we can purchase that? No doubt, man. I appreciate you uh, coming on tonight and, t- and tuning in, man. Um, yeah, the course is the pre sale is going down in a few weeks, like two to three weeks. And the actual course is going to be a couple weeks after that. So at the, probably at the latest end of September, it's going to be out. It, I'm pretty much closing everything up. Dot and I's cross the T's, did a lot of content, did a lot of writing chapters and everything. I want to be able to give y'all some value. I want Jenny to want to help y'all out. I'm giving you everything that I do over here, the mistakes I made, I'm giving you all the sauce so you don't have to go through the things I went. And the course is dope. And I ain't saying it because uh, it's me doing it, but genuinely I'm trying to make sure that when you jump out there, you be able to make passive income and you don't make the mistakes I make. So course coming soon. I know it's like a Dr. Dre album. I've been saying it for like months, but genuinely I've been in the lab putting it down so it's coming great greatly appreciate it thank you you're welcome uh no doubt no doubt thanks for that qu- uh, that question chris um because you know this is about uh not only highlighting the things that delmar has done but also the things that he still has going on so we got the course and we also have the trucking millionaires tour so thank you for that question chris all right and we also have Angie, how you doing today, Angie? 
the thanks for the platform and shout out to Desi because I would just asked him earlier in the week about something about trailers and he's like, I'm going to stay in my lane, but definitely <laughs> look up Del Mar. So just so happened tonight, I'll bump into this room. So my question is, I know there's a shortage of trailers. Um, I'm out of Connecticut. I'm in Connecticut. And I just want to know, like, looking into purchasing one, what would I be looking at for price-wise? I know it's kind of, you know, the prices are up there right now. Right. Um, i just give you a general number, $15,000, and that's probably an 07. Um, anything under that, um, they probably price gouging because they know it's a shortage. A respectful number, 07, it needs to be DOT ready. There's no reason why you're paying $15,000. You got to put five tires on there. And you got to go do the roof work and all this. 15000 DOT ready, meaning you could, it's been certified. The lights, tires, everything is on point. You hook up to it, you pull off. And that's an 07. Now, anything like, uh, you can always pretty much say, if it's 07, 15, it's 08, 16, 09, 17, and L. So. Okay. And I don't have to get any, I don't have to do like any type of FMSTA stuff. Like just purchasing, it's just an outright purchase, and that's it, right. right? It's pretty simple. You basically get the title. You go to your tag and title place. You get a registration for it. You put the tag. You put the uh, tag on. You put the registration on there. You get make sure it's DOT certified, mm-hmm. and that's basically it. It doesn't take you don't have to do RRP or any of that other stuff. No. Okay, I will be looking out for your course. So oh, I appreciate you. Thank you. Guys. All right, have a good one. You too. Well, boom. Hey, Delmar, let me ask you something, bro. How, how long was those interviews? Like, how long ago did you do those interviews with Ramel? Because I just came across that last night. Uh, I think three months ago. Uh, honestly, oh, man, okay. when, I've been behind the scenes working for so long. Desi didn't even know. Uh, Desi was renting trailers from me, and he didn't know how many trailers I had. I was one of those type of guys who didn't want people to know. Uh, I just wanted to blend in, and I was doing myself a disservice because people need to know this information. And I was more like, I didn't want to be in the limelight. I know it's kind of hard because I'm talking so much. I got so much energy. I just did it behind the scenes, and um, so one of the least one of the least seeds, parts who was renting from me, spoke about me on that show, and Rob was like, "I never heard of that before. Who is that guy?" And um, I asked that once he said that, and I spoke to him. I started telling my least seeds who I was and what I did, and people was amazed. So uh, three months ago, man, and I really started to own it, and here I am. Yeah, Boom. Man, I, I appreciate you, bro. I, like I said, I just was was watching you early this morning. <laughs> like, so it was weird to like see you this fast. No, oh, that's what's up, man. It was meant to be, man. It's the, it's the energy, bro. All right, all right. Thank you again for that question, brother. Uh, but look, you know, it's been a little over, or excuse me, a little under an hour and a half. Uh, so you know, I want to be respectful of this brother's time. Um, I just want to go ahead and say. Delmar, thank you very much, brother, for joining us tonight. Um, I knew from the get-go that this was going to be a good situation because you, <laughs> you know what I mean, your charisma. So the fact I appreciate that you, you, man. Yeah, the fact that you brought that here tonight, um, I was I was just very thankful, very grateful. You brought the gems, so um, you know you're always welcome on the stage. If you have anything that you want to, uh, you know, promote, highlight in the future, man, you know I'm just a, a text away. So um, just let me know. But also, as we're closing out the room, you know, I just want to know, did you want to say anything before? Yeah. We- no doubt. I, I want to say I appreciate you bringing me on this platform. It means a lot. And I genuinely say that because uh, I've, been, I've been overlooked for a lot when, in the, it, off the social media site. But, you know, because behind the scenes, people didn't know who I was because I wasn't on it. And I'm just I'm embracing People are inviting me places. I want to make sure when I do, I bring value and I don't waste nobody's time. Follow me at, um, on Instagram and Facebook at Trailer Strong. Trailer Strong. Um, I'm gonna be dropping my information about my course. Um, I have a, a ebook about your credit. That's one of the ways I scale my business. I made sure my credit was on point when I went in there. I OPM. I got other people money. And I was able to buy all the stuff. So I got a credit book on that too. Go in the link in the bio. Um, and the course is dope. If you want to be in a situation where you can make passive income. And you won't have to sit there and manage a driver. Some people don't want to manage a driver. They want to still keep their nine to five and don't have to deal with dispatching. This ebook, this e course that I'm putting out is this for you. This is what you want to do. You can still have your nine to five. You don't have to have a CDL. You don't have to have an 18 wheeler in order to, to get a, a trade leasing company. And that's what I'm doing in this course. You're going to love it. It's, I'm putting it down, breaking down everything. The sauce is in there. All you got to do is execute. Boom, boom, boom. Thank you for that, brother. Um, 
So look, guys, I, I mean, Demar, I'm just going to throw this out there. I mean, just because it's kind of like your cousin, you know, even your redhead stepchild cousin. I don't know, whatever that was trying to say right there. But, <laughs> you you know, the chassis for the, the ports, you know, that might be down your, you know, that might be something that you're interested in, too, in a little bit. So I just want to throw that out there. because. Hey, and I, I've been thinking about it, man, and I know a couple of people that's in that area, and it's just a matter of time for we lock in. Right. And when I learn, when I learn, y'all learn. All right. Yeah. You know, we all love to hear that, brother. So, uh, again, I just want to say thank you to everybody for taking the time out of your evening to just join us uh, to, to learn more about uh, the trailer business, uh, renting trailers, uh, to hear Delmar's story, and to learn about his course that's coming up and uh, his stop with the Truck and Millionaire Store. I'm just very, very grateful to have the support. I mean, it's the, it's the same. I mean, it's growing. The, the community is growing. But I've had, like, some pretty good support um, from the beginning. So I just really want to say thank you to you all. And, uh, you know, next week we got a pretty good show, too. You know, so we're just, we're just trying to keep it strong, keep the information flowing. Um, next week we're going to be talking about talking to somebody that built their own platform um, that helps dispatchers truckers and i think brokers alike so um excited about that and if you guys need anything from me in the meantime you you know just feel free to reach out to me on instagram uh i I do respond you just let me know um but yeah that's basically it i'm jory myers atlanta dispatch llc if y'all need anything from me hit me but um that's it i'm closing out the room appreciate y'all see y'all later